If you've been watching my channel for a while, you've probably made a lot of games yourself. Whether it may be a simple project like a cat apple chomp, an intermediate project like a connect 4, or quite advanced projects like color switch and geometry dash. However, each of these projects is limited in its scope. These are all local games played within your own computer. Even in the cases where we did make multiplayer games such as Connect 4, both the players had to be present in front of the same laptop. So, how do we get beyond this? How do we create games that go beyond a single computer? How do we create games that can be played by humans across the world? How do we make cloud games? Well, I hope to answer that question in this tutorial series. Now, given that this is a new topic, we will start out small. In fact, we will be creating an improved version of a two-player tic-tac-toe game. The only difference is that instead of having the two players play on the same computer, we will create the program in such a way that two players from across the world are randomly assigned to play with each other. So, how exactly is this going to work? Well, there are going to be two players behind two different computers. There is a brief start where the two players are connected to the game and then the game begins. After the players clash and one of them wins, there is a quick animation and then the players are discharged from the server. Rather than starting off with an empty scratch file, I'd recommend using a starter pack that I prepared myself. This starter file will include the costumes of the squares, the line draw, and the thumbnail. So, to get this file, click on the link in the description which says Downloadable Files. This will take you to a Google Drive attachment within which you can download the file labeled Start. Also, in case you're stuck with bugs at a particular video, you can download just the particular part and then continue. Okay, let's start with the code. We first head over to the player sprite. Let's now make our first cloud variable. We can call this p1 and we make sure to check the box beside cloud variable. Once you create the variable, you will notice a warning come on top. It states that cloud variables can only store numbers and not letters or symbols. This is quite important to keep in mind. We can create a second cloud variable called p2 and then create a normal variable for all sprites called a player. Now, you may be thinking, that's all well and good, but how exactly are cloud variables different from normal variables? The answer to that is quite simple. Let's say you share a project which has no cloud variables. Multiple users across the world play this game, however, each of them have their own copy of the variables. A change in a normal variable of one project does not affect the value of the variable in other projects. On the other hand, a change in the value of a cloud variable is transmitted and changed across all projects. Here's a quick example. On the left side, I have the shared project that we are currently programming. This is logged into my alternative account, Clumsy Clicker. On the right side, I have an incognito tab logged into my main account, Just Finished Coding. Here, I'm on the same shared project page as the code on the left-hand side. As you can see, both the player variable and the p1 cloud variable are set to zero on both sides. When we set the player variable to one on the left, the player variable stays as zero on the right. On the other hand, when we change the cloud p1 variable to 1, it changes in all projects. This is the fundamental working of cloud variables. A change in the value of a cloud variable in one project results in the change in the value of the variable across all projects. Okay, before we go on, let me quickly walk you through what we'll be doing during this video and the next one. We will program the player sprite in such a way that it can be moved by a player in one project and be transmitted across projects. So, let's start with the main script. When the green flag is clicked, we set player to zero. Within a forever loop, if player is equal to one, we set p1 to mouse x and p2 to mouse y. 
within the forever loop but outside the if then condition we move the sprite to the coordinates x p1 and y p2. Let's go through what will happen here. Essentially we're using the p1 cloud variable to store the x position of the sprite and the p2 cloud variable to store the y position of the sprite. We're trying to get the sprite to follow the mouse pointer, so we set the variables to mouse x and mouse y respectively. The player variable works like a switch. Initially, both the p1 and p2 variables are blank, so the cat would not move until those variables change. These variables in turn will only change when the player variable switches from 0 to 1. Basically, nothing happens until some event changes the player variable to 1 and after this the cat will follow the mouse pointer all across the stage. We have coded no event to change the player variable, so let's do that right now. When the space key is pressed, we will set the player variable to 1. Great, let's now switch to the preview mode. This is how cloud games are generally tested. We first click on the green flag on both sides. If you do this, the program should stay the same. However, when you press the space key on the left screen, you will see the real magic. Not only does the cat follow the mouse on the left screen, but the movement is also repeated on the right screen. Many of you who are trying this out for the first time would be quite disappointed. After all, why are the movements so lacky? And why does the cat move independently on each axis instead of moving together? Well, let me answer these questions one by one. So first off, why can't the cat move diagonally? The reason is two cloud variables. This results in each frame containing the update of one variable. At first, the p1 variable updates and then after a frame, the p2 variable updates. The only way to go around this and make the position update simultaneously is to use one cloud variable per player. This is what we'll be doing in the next video with encoding and decoding scripts. So what about the second question? Why is the movement so lacky? Unfortunately for us, this isn't a problem which we can completely fix. Scratch's cloud variables update every 0.1 seconds. This equates to 10 frames per second. While this may seem fast, it's actually extremely slow. To put things in perspective, here's me playing Subway Surfers in 30 frames per second on the left and on 10 frames per second on the right. As you can see, there is a huge difference in the game experience. This is one of the reasons cloud variables are generally not made in Scratch. The software just isn't suited for this. However, not all popular cloud games have lots of movements, sensitive controls, and extreme precision. In fact, 10 FPS is quite alright for most games, whether it's Agar.io, Slither.io, Cloud Platformers, or in our case, Tic Tac Toe. So, that will be all for this video. In the next video, we will focus on encoding and decoding scripts so that the movement is a lot smoother. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.